Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I know this. We just got over the, the teachings on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please go back on the recordings, previous recordings. And also don't forget to go to my website, the www.mf, like Frank, then ministries. And it says www.mfministries.net. And you'll be able to see all our TV programs there. And they're free. Uh, teachings and also my testimony, how God delivered me from transgender. Uh, on English interview, You, uh, when I was at Lakewood Singles and they interviewed me how God delivered me, please go there. And also my book, Power of the Cross, it got some more detail of my deliverance and healing. Uh, that's only nine ninety nine. You can download it. And also the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please go to our website. There's a lot of good information that will help you in your growth in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord today. Um, there is a very alarming uh, topic that has stirred my spirit. And and I know there are ministers, brothers and sisters out there would agree with me uh, regarding repentance. Uh, should a Christian repent uh, knowing that God already forgave them of their sins in the future, present, and past? Uh, should we just only accept and ask God to forgive us at one time, confess Jesus as Lord, Jesus come in my heart and be the Lord of my life. I believe you're the Son of God, that God has raised you from the dead, and I confess Jesus as my Lord. And a lot of people, uh, they're philosophies of men. And this is one thing I want to warn the body of Christ. If a well-known minister begins to teach things that contradicts the word, don't go following him just because he's well known and he got a big bank account and he got an airplane and nothing wrong having those things. It's just that that doesn't qualify him as being a true teaching of the gospel. Uh, what qualifies you as preaching the gospel is the gospel you preach lines up with the word of God. So I don't care if you roll on the floor and speak in tongues and I speak in tongues and and go to big church or little church, it don't matter. You go by the word of God. Don't believe man. And and these preachers who say there's no need for a Christian to repent or confess his sin any longer because his sin has already been forgiven. Well I disagree with that because the Word of God disagrees with it. Uh, let's go into the Scripture right now, and I hope uh, we'll probably, if we could finish it today, good. If not, we'll continue the following time because I think we're going to be having our guest. Uh, the last Sunday, it will be Ron Geyer as our guest. We, he was awesome. So after that, we'll probably continue this series on should a Christian repent or confess a sin once he commits a sin after being born again. And there are some preachers, well-known ministers, I'm not going to mention the names, uh, that say you don't have to because God already forgave you. But we know as believers who read their Bible, now the baby Christians if, that are just flying around and don't know any better, they just follow anything that teach because they're well-known, they follow them. Uh, well, let's go in, on, in 2 Timothy uh, let, I'm sorry, I'm saying Colossians. I'm sorry, we're going to go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, uh, verse 6. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Here we go. Are you ready? Let's pack up the car and just follow the word of God. Praise be to God. And before I do, uh, let's pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. Father, we pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. God bless them. Oh, God, you know the issues that are going on. But God, they are your chosen people. And Father, these presidents that are trying to divide the land, shame on them. But Lord, we pray, God, that you protect Israel and bless them in Jesus' name. And we pray for our president, God. 
God, give them wisdom. Give them strength. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. And I want to let you know, let it be recorded, documented, this president will be president again in 2020. So get over yourself. The Lord spoke to me in 2016 that he will be president then and he became president of course a lot of people came say you prophesying is false he's not going to come he's not a uh, politician he's just a real estate investor a uh, money hungry <laughs> and i heard all the negative things and my opinion was i did agree with him in some sense I didn't believe he was qualified, but the Lord said, no, you're going to prophesy and he's going to be my president because he's going to be fulfilling my desires, not society's desires or the politician's desires. I said, okay, Lord, and I prophesied. It's documented on my f website. You could see it. And uh, every prophecy the Lord has given me, I give him all the glory and honor to be able to share with the, the, the body and the world uh, it comes to pass, and it's not because I'm all that. I'm just a vessel. God used a donkey then. He'll use one today. So I don't think I'm all that. I'm just a servant just like you. God will use you, use anybody, but give him the glory. Okay, let's continue right now. Okay, you found it, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in him. God expects us to walk in Christ. Okay? And he expects us in verse 7. He says, rooted and built up in him. God expects us to be rooted in, in our foundation is in him. And established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in with thanksgiving do you understand he wants us to be rooted to be established that jesus christ is the son of god that he is the door he is the way i know their philosophies these well-known movie stars uh, uh, like oprah we oh there's many ways to heaven and well sorry miss oprah you're wrong there's only one way and that's jesus See, their philosophies and people, oh, this lady, Miss Oprah, rich and filthy rich, uh, she said there are many ways, and she's so sincere. Well, she's sincerely wrong, okay? Because there's only one way, and that's why Jesus says, be rooted and built up in him and establish in the faith establish that is not by your works. There are some teaching, the other philosophies that as hard as you work and all the good deeds and you read all these scriptures, you're going to go to heaven. No, when you put your faith in your deeds, when you put your faith in your works, you become a curse. And believe me, brother, you will miss heaven in the second. Because if you depend on your strength and your righteousness, you missed it. That's what God wants us. You baby Christians out there, you better study that Bible back and forth. I recommend get a living Bible because if you just started, you hear thou and thee, just like, uh, Shakespeare and just singing in tongues, you know. Uh, get your living Bible in modern English and and then go back forth with the King James in English, modern English and King, so you can understand. Because it's so important. God wants His children to be rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as you've been taught. What have they been taught? First of all, they've been taught no man comes to the Father but by Jesus, and that Jesus is the only way, that he is the door. There's no Buddha, no High Krishna, no Muhammad. And another thing, they're not the same God, Jehovah, no. Get over it. There's only one way to Jehovah. It is Jesus Christ. Muhammad is still in the grave. Buddha 
but big as he was, he's still in the grave. Now he's probably bones and ashes. Hi Krishna, he's in the grave. All these gurus, they're in the grave. But Jesus is the only one who said, I will rise on the third day, and he was risen. We need to be established. Why do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Because it is written that he is the Son, that no man comes to the Father but by him, that I am the way, that I am the door. You need to be able to defend the truth and be able to stand your ground and that Jesus is God. Oh, I don't believe you. He's, he's like, they're, they're like some of these false religions. That's, that's once again, philosophies of men. They're doctrines of devils. They try to take the deity of Jesus, saying that uh, oh, Jesus is just like you and me. Uh, well, here he was a man. He became a man. But yet, at the same time, he's 100% all God. That manual God be with us. He's a hundred percent God. Do you understand? It's very important that for us to be established in the faith. But a lot of people don't know how to defend the truth. They follow all these false doctrines. And they go here and there. Well, Oprah says this. And there's a different ways to heaven. No, we make it very clear. There's only one way. He says, beware, verse 8, lest anyone cheats you through philosophies, empty deceits, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of this world, and not according to Christ. Did you hear that? God says, beware of these philosophies. For him to dwell in all fullness, it says, and not according to Christ. For in him, which is Jesus, dwell all fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Did you hear that? In him. It's not the Ten Commandments that save you. Yes, we automatically obey. We fulfill the law through love. Love fulfills the law. In other words, you automatically want to be obedient. You automatically don't want to kill people because you have the nature of Christ. You're a new creature. According to 1 Corinthians 5, 19, 17, you are a new creature. Old things has passed away. Behold, all things becometh new. You are a new creature. You are a new species. You are spirit, soul, and body. We have to understand our foundation, our core roots of the gospel that Jesus is the only way. I'm going to just touch a little bit of this and we'll continue in the next session after uh, Ron Geyer's meeting next week. I think he's going to be in. But I'm looking forward uh, because a lot of people are deceived by vain philosophies. I'm going to throw this at you right now. They're saying that John 1, 9 is not applying to Christians. That applies to sinners. Uh, I said, no, he says, dear children. He's not talking to sinners who never accept. That's talking to uh, uh, to believers. That means that you and I are going to fall and make a mistake. We're not perfect. We're perfect in his righteousness, but we are a growing progress. We're going from glory to glory, from grace to grace. Do you understand? I said, but beware of this horrible philosophies that try to say that uh, that there's no need to repent and we're going to go into those scriptures but uh let's 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 just touch on some of it it says here it says the traditions of men according to the basic principles it says beware lest any man cheats you through philosophies and empty deceits, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. See, and, and he said, be established and rooted in him. And we need to know who he is, that he is the Son of God, but he also is God the Son. And according to Hebrews, let me go in there, and I just for the sake of those who don't believe that Jesus is God, according to Hebrews, it says here, uh, uh, verse 1, that God created the world through his Son. Who is his Son? Jesus. 
God, whose various times and various was spoken in times past to the fathers by the prophet, then in the last day he spoke to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things. Through him he made the world. Did you hear that? That's Hebrews chapter 1. You need to understand. Well, a lot of these people who go knocking on their door, you know who I'm talking about, say that Jesus is only a, the Son of God, and he's a servant of God, that he's human, but he's not deity. Okay? Now, uh, when I used to have them come about house i used to debate with them and i and they come running away from me because <laughs> i showed them this scripture so you're telling me jesus is not god he says yes well why let me give me give me your bible in hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 he says but to the son he says listen to this everybody listen we're going to prove that jesus is god the son this is how you prove and have the establishment of knowing that he is deity at the same time he's man. Okay, here it is. But unto the Son he says, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scripture of righteousness is the scripture of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hate lawlessness. Therefore, God, hear this, here it is, here it is, everybody, verse 9, Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with all your gladness more than your companies. Oh my God, when I showed that to those people, not gonna, they ran for me. I said, you see, oh, we can't believe that, they say. Well, see, because your doctrines of devils, anything that contradicts the word of God is heresy, is antichrist. You see, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the door. Jesus is God the Son. Jesus created the worlds. See, we're just touching a little bit because this is so intense because so many people are we need to teach the congregation how to defend the truth, how to stand on the truth, that there's only one way. We need to give them scriptures, how to show where it is, have them read it out loud so they could understand. Here God, Jehovah, was calling Jesus God. Oh, hallelujah. And then we're going to show you and later on, of the Trinity, to show you the Trinity, how we could prove it through the Word of God. But see, because people, uh, they don't, they're lazy. All they want to talk about, uh, teach me how to be successful. Teach me how to be a millionaire. No, I'm going to teach you the full gospel, the whole gospel. Yes, God blesses you. Yes, God blesses you financially. Yes, God wants you to have the best if you obey when he says give your tithes. And God obligated himself to bless you. He says, see if I not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. See, I know the word. Of God. See, I would teach you the word that will help you the full gospel, not my philosophy or the philosophy of religion, but the true gospel, the foundation, the core belief of a believer to know that Jesus is Lord and God. And he is also the creator, as you've seen in verse 2. He says, in this last days in Hebrews, and to us, he's, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the world, whose men in the brightness of his glory express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his Power when he by himself purged our sin and sat down on the right hand of the majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's all Shaddai. He's Omega. He's the beginning and the end. I remember when I was younger. Oh, when I was staying at the guest of a friend's house. 
and I was on the couch, uh, and all of a sudden uh, I heard a whirlwind uh, appeared in my in the living room where I was a guest at. Uh, my spirit got out of my body, and there stood Jesus. Uh, he said, I am what I am. He called, he said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, he says, I am life in eternal life. And he said to me, all things that have life will praise me. Uh, let me tell you what happened to me that moment. My spirit was standing up, sitting up on my body. My body was laying down. Oh, brother, I heard my hair. I heard my blood. I heard my bones. I heard, I literally hear, heard my skin, every tissue, every fiber of my body saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, the highest. When God of when Jesus stood there before me, every part of my body recognized his creator, which is Jesus, God and Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, the Lamb, which was sacrificed before the foundation of the world. I'm talking about a God. I'm not talking about someone who said he dies and never resurrects. I'm talking about a God who died for my sins and your sins, and it was resurrected the third day. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we better get ready. One day, we're all going to bow our knees to our Savior, our Creator. But God wants His children and the people to teach the babes in Christ the foundation so they won't be deceived by these false doctrines of people coming and knocking on doors and saying, Jesus is not God. Oh, that's damnation against God's word. That's blasphemy. How dare you to say that Jesus is not Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we're going to continue this. Uh, oh, yes, this is so much, uh, so much information. And we're going to continue. Shall a Christian have to repent? and confess their sin. Of course he does. And I will give you scripture and verse. Let me just give it, throw it at you right now, just for the sake of those who try to say you don't have to. Well, let me just read this to you. And we're going to continue on that topic. Here it is. Uh, Revelations 3, 19. It says, I know. Okay, it says, he says to my children, I said, you shall repent. He says, I, to my children, you shall repent. He says to his children, we have to repent. We have to confess our sins. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, a lot of people don't believe that we have to repent. Uh, yes, but Jesus, the word of God says we do. Revelation 3, 19. Now, let me see. Here he goes. Are you ready? As, as many as I love, these are the sons of God. This is not just the sinners. As many as I love, I rebuke. You read in Hebrews six twelve that God chastised those whom he loved who are children. Those who are not children are bastards. God calls it that, not me. So don't say, write me, say, you say the curse word. No, God said that. He says, I will rebuke and chastise whom I love. He will correct you. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Did you hear that? Jesus said to repent. Did you hear that? Jesus said to the church, to the people, repent. And through the whole Bible revelations, when God was talking to the churches, he said, repent, for I have something against you. And for those ministers to say, oh, we don't have to repent. I'm going to show you some more scriptures regarding that. But because of people's vain philosophies, you running around like a little flower, like a little butterfly, following every wind and doctrine, tossed to and fro, be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Don't be tossed to and fro. Be established in the word of God. Hallelujah. Evangelist Fernandez tells you the truth. 
Hallelujah. Don't believe me. Believe what the word of God says. He's the author, the finisher of my faith and your faith. We need to be established. This is the philosophy, a philosophy of men that try to change the word of God. See, society changes. The world changes. But the word of God never changes. He is the same today, forever, and he never changes. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, beware, like a red flag, philosophies of man who teach him that there are other ways and, and, and saying, and also these famous preachers saying, oh, you don't have to repent. We just read in Revelation 3, he, did Jesus say to his children, repent? And my Bible says, anyone who takes away from the word of God they lose their salvation. Their names are taken out of the book of life. Read it in Revelations 21. Yeah, read it, read it, read it. I said, we better be careful about trying to change things and make it to our, oh God, we have to be very careful about changing things and twisting the word of God and adding to it. Right now, before we dismiss and go, don't forget to tune in next week. Uh, looking forward to hear from you. Let's say this. Those who have not accepted Jesus right now, say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you're the Son of God and also God. Jesus, come in my heart. I confess Jesus is my Lord. Forgive me. Wash me with that precious blood. Fill me with that Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, right now, the one who's listening, oh, you know the heartaches. If you're sick right now, lay hands on your body. Right now, I command that sickness and disorder. Go in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. You're whole in the name of Jesus. And we claim your loved ones for the kingdom of God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God, save them. And fill them with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Don't forget we're going to continue the philosophies of men. God bless you. Don't listen to these false teachers. Listen to the word of God. Don't believe me. Believe the word of God. Test to see what I'm saying is true. Find out if I'm lying or telling the truth. Quit being lazy. Get in that word. Praise be to God. Love you. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. See you next week.